I gotta put 200. 1200. What'd you got? Um, I had a 7, uh, and I should have raised on the, should have raised on the uh, flop. Because I figured you're an ace king. But, I, but who knew that you would make your damn inside? We are playing 100, 200, 400 at Hustler Casino Live. Gall raises it up in the cutoff with Jack Seven of Hearts, playing about $88,000 deep to 1200 bucks, which is perfectly fine, perfectly reasonable. Some people may think the Jack Seven suited is too loosey goosey, but you know, as long as the button's gonna be kind of tight, you can raise stuff like Jack Seven suited. Over round two, Garrett Adelstein, he does not like to fold, and he's certainly not gonna fold the 10 9 offsuit. Let's head to the flop. Probably would have called. Yeah? I probably would have called the flop. Yeah. Jack. Got two overs. Gall in the cutoff yeah. with Jack Seven. Oh, what player. a setup yeah. hand. You gotta be kidding me. So Garrett Ray, I mean, Gall actually raised here. Yeah, Garrett calls. Uh, Garrett uh, flops. The nuts on a rainbow board, and Gall with top and bottom. I mean, how does this happen? Hottest 4,000. Garrett's gonna raise right away. He's not messing around. Flop comes. Jack eight seven, giving Garrett the nuts and Gall almost the nuts, but not quite good enough. Top and bottom pair. Garrett checks as he should do with his entire range. Gall makes a $1,200 bet, which I think is perfectly fine, perfectly reasonable. And then Garrett decides to put in the raise. A lot of people think, oh, you should slow play. Your opponent's drawing thin or dead. And yeah, they are going to be drawing thin or dead. The thing is, though, is that Garrett will be check raising this spot with a lot of gut shots. And if you're going to be check raising with a lot of gut shots, you also want to check raise with a lot of hands that are very good but vulnerable. That's going to be stuff like two pairs, maybe even something like ace jack if you have it. But then also, it's nice to mix in some super nuts in there too, because if your opponent does decide to just load the money in, then fine and good, right? Also, the commentators say that Gall doesn't really like to fold. If he doesn't really like to fold, that's even more of a reason to put in the check raise with the nuts, because if Gall has anything, a jack, an eight, a seven, maybe even a 10 or a nine, this is gonna be a spot where he's just gonna call and stick around. So against someone who is perhaps a little bit call happy, you should definitely raise the nuts immediately. Also, you wanna be very aggressive when you're playing super deep stacked, as we are here, about 220 big blinds deep. If you're playing very shallow stacked in a tournament, let's say, with 40 big blinds, it makes a lot more sense to slow play because you don't need to check raise immediately to get the money in by the river. But here, if Garrett just check calls, check calls, check raises, he won't even be able to get all the money in by the river. So in order to be able to get in all the money by the river, he needs to raise immediately. Let's see how Gall proceeds. We've seen Gall. He's already said it. I don't like the fold, right? And he's illustrated that. And Garrett is aware of that. 46. 180? Yes, 180. It's 180. Gall does just call, which I think is certainly ideal. This is a spot where when Garrett check raises, Garrett is announcing, I have that range I mentioned just before, either a junky draw, which Jack7 is crushing, or a strong but vulnerable hand, which is going to be something like Ace Jack, maybe Jack8, maybe Jack7, maybe Eight Seven or sporadically the nuts, maybe some sets or the straight. And if you are against sets or the straight, you don't want to get your money in right now because you're going to be close to dead. And the nice thing about the draws on the Jack-8-7 no flush draw is that they're gut shots, right? And you don't really care if your opponent's sticking around with a gut shot, especially when the gut shots are kind of obvious, right? So this is a spot where I definitely love calling and doing everything you can to keep Garrett in the pot with all of his bluffs. This time, though, he has the nuts, so it's not going to work out too well. Queen of spades on the turn. Gall still with jacks and sevens. Garrett still with the nuts. Garrett over betting the pot on the turn. The turn brings the Queen of Spades, which is an interesting card because now there is a flush draw available. If this board was perhaps a little bit less coordinated, I think an overbet would be mandatory. When there is a straight already available, though, I'm not sure if you necessarily want to overbet. That said, because we are deep stacked in a cash game and out of position, I think Garrett does just want to load money into the pot right now. It's kind of rough because if Gall did have a hand like... 9-8. He's probably just going to let it go when the queen over card comes because some of Garrett's bluffs are going to be hands like queen 10 and queen 9, right? Maybe even king queen with a backdoor draw. So 
this is a, a pretty rough turn card for those. That said, I think Garrett does just want to plow his money in because if Gaul does have an overpair or even ace jack, king jack, queen jack, he's not going to fold and you can get a ton of money in the pot. So Garrett does go for 15,000 into 12. I maybe would have even bet a little bit bigger in order to set up a river jam. When you go 15 into 12, if Gaul calls, the pot's going to go up to 40, what, 42? Uh, and Gaul's going to have about six, uh, 70 behind. I think I'd probably prefer just putting in a little bit more now. I realize it's an overbet still, right? But whenever you're putting in 1.2x pot versus 1.6x pot, a lot of people just aren't going to care, especially if they are a little bit call happy to begin with. So I think I probably would just loaded more money into the pot right now. That said, 15k. Let's see if Gaw can make the call. Seconds. Makes the call. As on the flop, I think Gaul's only option is to call here. He could very easily be beat, but he could also very easily be against a gut shot straight draw. So he just wants to call and try to not put all the money in by the river. The neat thing is that if Garrett does put him all in by the river, he has a pretty easy call. This is a spot where he has one of the better hands that he could have in his range. He does block sets, which is nice. So this is a situation where Gaul's planning on putting any amount of money in, but it's very important, very important, very important, pay attention, that he keeps all of Garrett's bluffs in. If he re-raises here, that allows Garrett to fold out a lot of his junky gut shots, and then those hands will not be in his river range that, uh, that could potentially bluff, right? So Gaul's main job here is to keep Garrett's range as wide as possible so the Jack-7 does stay the effective nuts. Let's head to the river. Pot is now 42,000. The river's a seven. The river is a disaster for Garrett. Bringing the seven of spades, the backdoor flush comes in and all of the sets and some of the two pairs just improve to full houses that are, of course, not gonna fold to a bet. So what I wanna know is what would you do in this situation? Not knowing Gaul's cards, of course. Would you check and then check fold against a bet? Would you check and then check call against a bet? Would you bet 21000 or would you still plow all the money in? Take a second, think about it, and write it in the comment section down below. And the river is a seven. Garrett's certainly aware that his opponent could have two pair before that river. This pot is already $42,000. Can Garrett get away from it? Forget about it. He doesn't want to get away from it. He's all in. This is a disastrous river for Garrett because two pairs came in, at least some of them, to make a full house that will not fold to any bet. And also, the backdoor flush did come in, which is certainly possible. Now, Garrett does have the nine of spades, which is nice. It blocks that a little bit. And you're not so concerned with the backdoor flush draws, but to be fair, if Gaul did have ace 10 of spades, ace nine of spades, king 10 of spades, king nine of spades, all those are gonna be in his range. So look, I realize Garrett ripped it all in. He's not afraid, but I think the right play here is to check. I think if you check, you can reasonably check and call. That said, this may sound crazy, but checking and then check folding may actually be acceptable here if, 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 you think Gaul's not going to turn any made hands into a bluff, like 9-8. Uh, That's a hand that could conceivably bluff the river that a lot of people don't. And if you think he's just going to be really straightforward on the river. Now, look, I don't know anything about Gaul's strategy. I know the commentators say he likes to call a lot. I'm just extrapolating. People who like to call a lot often don't like to bet a lot. That said, playing 200, 400, 800, or whatever we're playing here, or 100, 200, or 400, a big game at Hustler Casino Live. Most of these players are not afraid to get in there and bluff, and Gaul certainly does not look like a weak, tight knit just from looking at him. So I think the player is probably to check call. But if you do know your opponent just does not like putting in a lot of money without the nuts, you can check here. And if your opponent just confidently puts it in, they probably have the nuts because a lot of people are not going to take a hand like 9-8 or Jack-10 and turn it into a bluff on the river. And if they're not bluffing, then what do they have? They have a full house or they have a flush, right? So... Definitely an interesting spot for Garrett. He does decide to rip it in. I certainly don't fault him for that, but 
I think when the seven is a spade, you have to be especially careful because that's just one more type of hand that you could have been against that you now lose to. Let's see if Gall finds the call with the full house. I, I don't know what Gall's waiting for here. Unless the cards are incorrect, I, I don't know what he's waiting for. Adding two minutes. I'm going to. Sorry. I mean, at this point, if you're Garrett, you're thinking, well, the guy's hemming and hawing. I'm good, right? All right, maybe the guy's got jack eight. Garrett's bet 68 into 42. I, I... Garrett on the left, Gall on the right. I'm, 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 I really want to see Garrett's face when, when Gall finally does make the call. Cold. It's actually a, a rough spot for Gall, despite the fact that he has a full house, because what really wants to shove here? Well, bluffs and full houses. And certainly Garrett could have pocket eights. That's about it, though. So it's actually not that tough. He calls, and Gall scoop loops a $180,000 pot. Good job, good work. Nice river. And Garrett gets crushed. If you want to watch another hand involving Garrett, where I'm not going to spoil it for you, someone gets crushed. Check out this video I have lined up for you next where there's a slow roll that ends up costing $390,000. Check it out right after this video. That's going to be it for today. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Make sure you click the like and subscribe buttons down below. And when you flop the nuts, I hope you don't get four outered. I'll talk to you next time.